Hi everyone, my name is Sari. You are watching my knitting podcast videos. This is my YouTube channel. And today, uh, it's been a while since I filmed a new video, so today is time for the first um, episode that I have filmed from our new home in Helsinki. So if you are new uh, here in my channel, uh, we just moved uh, about a month ago, we moved from Vasa, which is on the west coast of Finland, uh, to the capital city uh, Helsinki. And I was thinking that everything would have gone more smoothly. Uh, nothing major happened actually, but I wasn't just like kind of anticipating how much work it actually was to move. Um, from one city to another and this was the first time we moved um, after the birth of our son four years ago so it kind of took me by surprise um, how little time I have had for anything other than um, everything related to the move so packing first packing stuff in was and then um, unpacking everything here and putting things into place and and the move has been quite uh, tough on our son this it's the first time he ever moved so he's been missing our own own old home and his old friends in Vasa and so everything has been um, quite uh, tiring and and also my husband started at his new job and he's been traveling because of the job quite a lot so I've been alone at home with this with our son so uh, from the point that uh, I was in Helsinki alone from Monday to Thursday so I had like three nights every week for myself uh, just me um, nobody else to look after uh, to the point that um, I'm kind of like staying um, the, the only parent staying at home and taking taking care of the kid and and during the weekend trying to trying to um, get used to the new surroundings and um, making the move as easy as possible for for the kid so it's been um, a bit rough and I haven't really have time to to write any patterns. I haven't even had the mental capacity to write any patterns lately. And also um, the first two weeks in Helsinki uh, I didn't even have any time to knit or very 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 little time to knit. And um, I'll show you the pullover. I was knitting this Rauha pullover that I have, I think I have shown it to you um, on this uh, podcast earlier. Um, it's finished now, but I haven't had, had time to weave in the ends. But uh, for two weeks, uh, everything I managed to do was knit a collar and half a sleeve. So that is very little knitting for me. That's how busy I've been. But um, in this episode, I have quite a lot of new things that I can show you. Um, it's been a month since I, I recorded the previous video, so I have had one month worth of knitting. And um, what else? Um, because of November, um, I haven't even really um, managed to take many photos. I've been, first of all, I've been busy. And second of all, uh, November always takes me by surprise here in Finland. It's been so dark and when I come home from work, there's like no way that I could take decent photos because it's already pitch black outside. So I try to take photos during the weekends, but like I said, I've been really busy <laughs> during the weekends. So that's why my Instagram account has been really... Uh, quiet as well. I haven't had time to take photos. Uh, I haven't had the possibility to take photos because of the darkness. So that's why most of the things I'm going to be showing you today, um, you haven't even seen them yet. So that's a great thing, I think. Uh, you get the first peek to everything I have on my, my needles and what I've been knitting. And despite being super busy, um, when I started to put everything uh, next to me that I'm gonna show you. I realized that actually I haven't done quite a lot of knitting after all. 
But the pattern writing side has been uh, totally quiet, <laughs> I must admit. And I really should uh, try to um, write some patterns quite soon before I forget what I've been doing. But you know when when you have been like, for example, renovating a, a house or or writing a thesis that you've like been really um, productive and like really busy and really into something for for a period of time, and then when you take a few nights or a few weeks or one month off, it's really hard to get back to that routine because yeah. I, like I said uh, earlier this year, I was always three weeks and three nights every week alone in Helsinki and I had two train rides, um, three and a half hours each uh, every week. So I was really productive. I wrote a lot of patterns. I worked really hard on my patterns because I decided that because I'm alone um, in Helsinki, uh, I will make all the hours count and be as productive as possible. Uh, up to the point that during the summer I was totally exhausted. I had kind of too much on my plate and I decided to take it slower and then came the move and um, and everything else. So it's, it's been quite hard for me to get back to the rhythm of writing patterns. Like, like I said, in the summer it felt like my, my brain was fried <laughs> of uh, everything that I was... I, I worked like almost non-stop. I worked first like 8 to 4 at my day job and then when I came home from 5 to, to maybe maybe midnight or even 1am 1, 1 with my own patterns. So that was too much and it's been quite hard for me to get back to the rhythm and I, I don't want that rhythm that was way too much. But, but kind of like I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 six or seven uh, things that I have made that I could write the pattern to, but I just need to like really get myself together. And I have two patterns, uh, the Empress Pullover and uh, the Melon Socks that need photos. And, and because of November again, and because I've been so busy, and because I've been alone at home with our son, uh, I haven't really been able to take decent photos, but um, I think I have good photos for the Empress pullover now, so I will send them to my tech editor, who also does the, the layout for my patterns, so maybe I could get the pattern out next week, and I hope I will get the melon socks out next week as well. Um, here's the um, Emmeline hat. I don't know if this was already finished when I, um, I can't remember what I talked in my previous uh, video, but but uh, this is now finished uh, in case it wasn't in the previous video. And I used La Bien Amy um, Merino Singles. This is the Emmeline colorway and uh, the lighter one is La Belle Epoque. And I made this little hat with this Scandinavian uh, pattern on it. and. Here's the top of the hat. This is my favorite part. I really like the decrease lines of the hat. It has this like uh, double folded brim. So it started with a provisional cast on and then continued and then uh, at the bottom and um, top of the, the brim are joined together and then the color work. So this has been uh, tested. Uh, I think it's almost ready for um, for a release. I'm hoping to release it next weekend, just before my birthday. Um, my birthday is on uh, December 2nd, so I hope I will get it released next week. And I just finished uh, the cowl, but I forgot to take it here. I'll just quickly go and grab it. So I decided to make a matching cowl for the hat, but just I reversed um, the colors. So here the main color is uh, La Belle Epoque and the contrasting color is Emmeline and the same yarn. So it has uh, the same pattern on both sides, so it doesn't matter which way you wear it. And then there's, the, there's another pattern here 
at the both both ends and it looks like like this so it's a uh, nice and roomy roomy curl and because it doesn't have like a wrong side it, it, it's um, started with a provisional cast on then it's a long tube and then um, the ends are joined together with kitchener stitch and Luna still has the same routine even though we have a new apartment but this is what <laughs> she does in almost all of my videos but anyway so this is like a really nice nice cow and I should write the pattern as well for this one and have it quickly tested it so I could release both both Emmeline hat and uh, the cowl patterns um, what else have I been knitting? Um, if you have been following me on Instagram, uh, this one has been in my Insta stories. So this is a dinosaur hat I made for my son. So it has uh, three ceratops and I can't remember what the, this one with the long, long neck and then some Tyrannosaurus rex and Velociraptors, smaller ones over there so it has two of each on both side sides and this two has the same construction so a double folded brim and and color work and I made this a uh, little pom pom on the top it's with Novitas uh, reflective yarn so it uh, lights up in the dark when when like light comes there so it reflects light so it's really good and I used Ligon and Lace 80-20 uh, sock yarn for the base and it's in the colorway stage and the dinosaurs are knitted with Madeleine Tosh, um, Tosh Merino light and it's the colorway uh, area. It's really, really nice. So this has been um, in constant use ever since I got it off the needles. Uh, my son really really liked it and this is another thing that I should write the pattern for. Uh, I think it's quite simple to write the pattern because uh, it's just the chart so I should get it quickly uh, ready when when I'm um, uh, when I have <laughs> time to sit on my computer and write some patterns but yeah and mm, I have one more hat to show you. This is something I, I've been using it quite a lot, but there's something I have to figure out um, a little little thing about this that I'm not happy. Uh, this is just a basic ribbed hat, and I made this with uh, La Bien Amy Merina DK, and this colorway is called Caramel. And it has this like really long brim as well. So I did it triple. It started from the bottom and did it up upwards. Um, I uh, used Kitchener stitch to graft the end of the hat together, but because of the ribbing, it starts to draw it together and make <laughs> it looks like like this when it's on you. So it makes like this too years or, or it, it looks like this on your head so I don't quite like it so I think I might uh, take it apart and then just like pull the yarn through the rest of the stitches to, to gather it together so that it wouldn't make this like really weird weird shape at the top I don't I don't really like it but I have to, I haven't had time to do that but it's just a simple simple hat that I made and then this one that I'm wearing uh, I think I showed this to you in a video back in September or something like that but I had just made a part of the yoke so this is started from the top and it's just like this raw stockinette um, tube um, that I like I like how it starts to roll and then uh, I made some increases here and and then uh, like these sleeves uh, that are straight until the very end and then there's the decrease line is here on the top top of the sleeves you can see over there 
and and the hem is a bit high low so it's slightly uh, longer at the back than at the front and I used um, uh, stone wool for for this one so this is the stone wool Coriodale and I used this for another project that is coming out very soon but I can't uh, talk to you yet about it but maybe next month I think I can share what I've been making with this and this is um, I had leftovers for this one so I used them and add a bit, a bit more and of course this I've made a tubular bind off for the hem and and for the sleeves so it's really polished and finished um, this is another thing that I should write the pattern for, uh, but I'll show you. I usually write notes by hand and they look like, like this. So I have this much notes for, for this pullover and uh, from these notes uh, I myself I know how to I could make a second flower from this small piece of piece of notes but um, to write it all out and I should, should grade it uh, to different sizes so that will take some time and today I'm just going to be talking about what I have on my needles but I really should record a, a video uh, I, I really want to talk about the size inclusiveness which I think is really important and I'm all for for it but for me um, people saying that that uh, why don't you just create more patterns it's, it, it doesn't take a long time and it's just like put some more numbers in in an Excel uh, Excel file and and just make more more um, more sizes it, it it doesn't work like that and I think that's like over uh, simplifying stuff and I think it's it's very um, I think it's r really rude to say that my job is as simple as just putting things uh, into Excel files. If I start to do that, then then I'll, I'll just make really simple pullovers. I can't do like all these like great little simple details if I just produce all the patterns with Excel and just like with math. And for example, this pullover, I don't know if you can see a okay, close closer, but um, there's a, a shape I wanted to create a specific shape with the increases so they are uh, much more closer together here at the front and, and further away here at the back. And for each size I want to make, I have to calculate the stitch count individually to make su sure that I can get the same shape uh, as for, for this one. And for example, the point pullover, it takes time to create individual charts for each size. So I have to draw a different different chart for each each size. So it's not just um, me putting numbers uh, into into Excel file and poof magically getting more sizes. There's a lot of things that you have to figure out and, and, and think to to make make different sizes and and for example the Rauha pullover that has, I don't know, it's quite dark here already, but it has just this uh, one simple cable pattern here at the front. And to figure out how to make it for different sizes, so if you have size XS, the, the simple panel looks much wider than if you have size uh, like 5XL then the, the small panel will look like really, really thin and funny. And I just talked about this with my friend Leni, who is also a designer and she has a similar uh, pullover with, or similar 
um, shape on front of her pullover and she was thinking like should she made it wider or should she have two of the panels next to each other or how to figure these things out but I should really make a, a whole another episode about this subject because it's something that I want to talk about and I don't think people really understand uh, all the work that goes into designing it's it's not just excel and just like producing more numbers out of excel and kind of pisses me <laughs> off to, for, for somebody to simplify my design process into into like really like manual labor of, of like putting just numbers into excel but yeah I'll, I'll talk about it in a different episode I'll, I'll come back to my <laughs> So the Tula pullover, um, I named, I first called it Lumi, um, because Lumi means no in Finnish, but then there was a, a turtleneck pullover in the newest line of magazines, and it was called Lumi, so I didn't, didn't want, to, want to use the same name, so I called it Tule, which is like this old word for something like really, really cold, and, and um, uh, it's been something that I've been wearing wearing a lot. It's really uh, it looks great at the office if I have some more polished uh, pants on me. Uh, but uh, it's also really great for just lounging at home. It's cozy and relaxed enough for that as well. Um, one more or two, two more finished things. Um, the Rauha pullover, like I said, it's. It's also finished and I should put <laughs> my pattern as well. Um, I made this cozy, quite loose turtleneck for it. And it, like I said, it has just a simple cable pattern here at the front and dropped shoulders and, and long, long slim cuffs. And I used Isagur silk mohair. Um, the colorway is the number 36 and um, Red Rosaria Rosa Pomer Bobo uh, in the colorway 6 um, for this one held together and I really like the, the uh, shape uh, and uh, the two yarns together they give like this really nice um, pattern and then I could show you um, what I've been Knitting uh, or what I have on my nails um, here. This one project that I've been slowly working on for quite some time already. This is the second hour pullover, and just yesterday in the evening I joined the sleeves and the body together. So now I start to study the raglan decreases for this one and I've been working on so many mohair projects lately so I've been really bitten by the mohair bug so I have been using this hour from a Finnish dyer called Wool Me Once and this is the Kid Silk Mohair and um, Kid Mohair Silk and this is the Marina Single and they're both in the colorway Aslan and Together they make this like really beautiful coppery golden color. It doesn't really translate very well, well on, on film, but it's like really like a golden, golden color, coppery, beautiful. And I don't know if you remember, this is the first hour and it's been one of my favorite pullovers to wear um, lately. And it's so nice. And Looks like it has a set in sleeve, but it's actually it's a raglan pullover with a really deep, um, um, really really deep uh, sleeve. Uh, what is that? Armhole, and then just this like a uh, three little point of for the shoulders and a double folded neckline. And I've been working for uh, on another hour pullover, and it's going to be this, this one. So this is slowly coming together, and I made so bad notes when I was uh, working on this in the summer 
that I needed to cast on another one to make sure my 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 nodes are okay and then I should calculate um, the rest of the sizes that I haven't really done anything about the pattern writing yet. Sorry. Uh, I know people have been asking about the pattern and I, I really want to get it get it done but yeah. Um, the marlon is running around here. If you hear some weird noises and cat cat noises, uh, it's Marlon who is playing. And this is another project that I already started back in May. I bought the yarn uh, from Berlin in uh, Yarn Over Berlin. And it looks like this. And I first started with a sleeve and then I ripped it back and and started with the body and and decided to knit it. I was start, I started making it flat and then I decided that I want to um, knit it in the round instead. So I started with the body and and it has it's like a uh, um, zigzag uh, ribbing at the bottom and then these like little kind of like bubbles. They're not really bubbles, but but um, um, they look like small small bubbles. And I'm using Nderero Natura Gilead. This is the colorway caramel for, for this project. And I really love working with this yarn. It's super bouncy. And I used this um, for my cardigan that was featured in the newest Pom Pom quarterly magazine, the winter issue. There was this like uh, Tellervo cardigan that I designed. Uh, I didn't need it myself. I used sample knitter for that one, but but it's with the same yarn, and I absolutely love how the cardigan feels. Unfortunately, there's a, a post officers strike going on in Finland, so I haven't received my contributor copy of the newest Pom Pom magazine yet. I'm really sad about it. I'm hoping the the strike will end very soon, and and people who are striking will get um, the pay rises that they are looking for. And everybody is happy, and I will get my post. I have, I know, I have some yarn uh, stuck in the post office, and I know I have the, the contributor copy for the Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. So I'm super sad about that, and and I I hope the the things will get back to normal before Christmas, so everybody gets their Christmas cards and Christmas presents. So. That's been going on for a couple of weeks here in Finland, but this is something that I've been making. And lastly, one more project. I started knitting on my own second Irish hat, actually this morning. I've only done this very little thing. So here's my my beginning for my, my second Iris. And the iris skull is still running. Luna and Maron are like fighting. <laughs> so, um, hopefully nothing of that uh, hears today this video. But anyway, so um, the iris skull is still running for a couple of weeks. So until December 8th, so uh, two weeks on Sunday. And on the December 9th, I will pick a winner from the call and you don't have to have a finished hat by that time and Hedgehog Fibers have promised a small price for the winner so it's really worthwhile um, starting your iris hat uh, if, if you have been thinking about that and, and uh, there's a discount code for the iris pattern that is valid uh, until, until the end uh, of the um, end of the call and you can find it in my, my Iris Call Ravelry group. I will link the group information below this video so you can go and check it out. But this is my own Iris hat, um, second Iris hat actually. And I'm using, I decided not to use any mohair this time. Uh, instead I'm using two strands of um, th uh, this uh, Merino skinny singles. Uh, this is the colorway, um, I think it was called clay, let me check, yeah, clay. Uh, it's like this beautiful terracotta color. Uh, one more thing that I forgot to show you when I was talking about finished things. Um, I made this little owl stuff for my son, he's a big fan of owls, he has several 
um, old soft toys and um, I made this for him when we moved to this new apartment so it was finished when he came here so I was here before uh, he came and I made this for him as a welcome present to the new apartment and it looks like this and this is with um, Claire Garland's snowy old pattern but I used um, fingering weight yarn uh, held together uh, with, with one strand of mohair instead of, I think it was iron weight yarn that you, you needed for the project and uh, six millimeter needles but I used 3.5 millimeter needles so mine is um, quite a lot smaller than the, the, um, the pattern called for but I kind of I wanted the smaller smaller or not a big one and this is such a great pattern it was a bit hard I think um, or not in, Nothing about the pattern was hard, but but um, I think it wasn't very well written in that sense that um, I, I wasn't always sure which part I was making and if I was actually making it right. But I think it looks looks great, and I think I probably was just like overthinking everything about it. But. Um, and I used hedge, um, not hedgehog fibers. I used um, a holst garn, super soft, uh, in two colors, and then I added uh, one strand of Skein Queen's uh, fluff for the mohair, and and the speckled yarn that I used for the for the body is from Wool Me Once, and it's a sock yarn, and the colorway is called. Um, footsteps to never wear so it was the same dyer as I used for the second hour full hour but this is like it was such a fun little project to knit and uh, Claire Carland also has really nice bunny patterns and and he she um, also has a really nice cat pattern I purchased the cat pattern as well so I think I will be making a cat for my son for uh, for Christmas present, but yeah, this is something that I also also made cute little all I'll quickly show you two things two yarns yarn purchases that I made and then it's everything for today um, Last week I attended uh, a Finnish crafts fair in Tampere. I was there with Novita uh, the crafts fair is for three days, but I was only for for um, one day over there, and I was almost all the time at Novita's booth teaching people uh, Tunisian crochet. So I didn't really have time to um, look anything that was over there. But um, I had time to visit um, Kasakero Pom Pom, which is a really great Finnish dyer and yarn shop in Kuopio, and you definitely should check them out if you already haven't and I bought a Sloma single which is a finchy wool um, fingering weight in uh, three colors so I have this is a uh, Lokaku which means October um, Metsa it's like this dark green forest and in this pink it's called Coral, little coral, and I'm going to use this for a pullover. I already have the, the idea in mind for a longer, longer, long time, but I haven't had time to execute it. And yesterday I went to my local yarn store, uh, Snore Lankakapu. They had an eight year uh, birthday party with some champagne and mingling, and it was really nice. And I bought these two uh, hedgehog fibers skeins. This is the Kid Still Clays in uh, Colorway Pinky Swear and then um, Skinny Singles in, in Colorway Cheeky and I'm gonna use them two together and I'll make up a, like a color I um, can't remember, is it Tiki or something like that, really stupid name um, like, like, like a turtleneck and like this bib that I can use uh, under my, my coat. But that's everything for today. Uh, I'll try to film a new video soon. I know I always say this, um, but really, 
Um, it's quite challenging this time of the year. I already see that the light is fading and, and I really should just stop. But yeah, that's everything that I've, I've been making lately. And let's see if I can get some at home writing done next week. But that's everything. Bye! Thanks for watching my videos.